starting this weekend, KLM will cut almost all of its flights. The new summer schedule will be just 10% of what it normally runs. Its in-flight service will minimise physical contact between passengers and crew, and it also plans to cut up to 2,000 jobs. At Boeing 747s are being removed from the fleet early. Only 777s and 78s in future will fly on the intercontinental routes. As for currently, well, there you have it. The planes are parked at Schiphol. The chief executive of KLM is Peter Elvers. He joins me now from Schiphol Airport. Good to see you, sir. This new schedule, uh, you decided to keep some flights. I I'm curious as to the thinking when other airlines like Austrian or like Brussels uh, decided to ground the fleet for the crisis. Well, we wanted to keep some service, uh, in fact, in operation in order to, uh, to do two things, uh, to repatriate still a lot of people who are outside Europe, bring them back home, bring them back here to Europe, or elsewise bring people from here back to their countries, and also move some cargo. We see there's a lot of need for medical supplies, so we really like to keep some operation for those cargo movements. Uh, we're running out of adjectives to describe the situation for, your, for, for the world's airlines. How badly hit financially is KLM, Air France KLM going to be? Well, last year we celebrated 100 years and I, I, would, I would tend to say that this is the worst crisis in our history in terms of impact and we have never seen something on such a global scale with so much uncertainty going forward. What do you want from government, which, by the way, of course, has quite a good stake in your airline uh, after last year, but what do you want government to provide for you? Do you want loans? Do you want grants? Do you want bail? What is it? Well, we're discussing various topics with our government here in the Netherlands and my colleagues in France are doing the exact same. Uh, the, the prime objective is some of the short-term measures and we're quite pleased with the short-term announcements which the government has done in order to support some of the companies to continue to, uh, to have their, their salaries being paid towards the employees in order to keep some operation running and that's uh, very helpful for us in these very difficult times. You... The group, Air France KLM, didn't go into this crisis in a particularly strong position. Many airlines did and some, some didn't. I suppose for both, for both Air France and KLM, but for t particularly for KLM, you're too big to fail, aren't you? The, 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 the government has no choice. It has to see your survival. Well, the impact of KLM on the Dutch economy is enormous indeed. We are the second largest private employer of the country. We're standing here at an airport which is virtually empty where last year 71 million passengers uh, passed. The impact on the economy is, is enormous and as such the economy of the Netherlands and the, the future of KLM are tightly connected and that's precisely where there's a lot of support from the government in order to help us to face this, uh, this incredible heavy storm in our industry. What restrictions are you prepared to accept for help? Uh, for, I mean, you know, uh, there's always a symbolic one that the CEO will take no pay, but executive pay, no more bailout, uh, sorry, no more dividends, no more share buybacks, all those sort of things are on the table. Uh, are you prepared to take those conditions? Well, if taking no pay would solve the situation of the company, I would do it right away. No, I think the real issue is we're discussing with the government today what should be done on the short term. The conditions is something to be later uh, to be discussed in what exact shape and form that has to take place. Our prime concern now is to make sure that we bring as much as people back home who are stranded all over the world and that we bring in the needed medical supplies and goods from all over the world here in order to deal with this health situation. Let's talk about that because your alliance partners, the Chinese alliance partners, have been flying masks to you, which is a reversal, of course, from what you were doing when China was at the worst part, isn't it? Yeah, well, we, we, 
about two months ago, we helped the, the Chinese with providing masks and, and indeed we, we, we received uh, the same one in return and obviously we are very grateful with the help and the supplies we got from our friends in China. The Chinese carrier still had the operations into Amsterdam so they shipped it in and it was really much needed for our hospitals here but also for our crews and I'm tremendously proud on our crews who are still making the flights and try to do it in the best possible ways in order to bring back people home. I, I'm, I'm glad you led me to the, 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 your cruise. Have a listen. I'm sure you've heard it a million times, but we're playing it again anyway, of one of your purses on a recent flight as she said goodbye to the passengers. Have a listen. Nowadays, music brings us together, and that's why I will sing a song to you to say goodbye. And wish you all the best and love, and stay healthy from us, KLM crew. So. This is for you. When will I see you again? When will we share precious moments? Will I have to wait forever? Will I have to suffer and cry? Well, Peter, I bet that's not in the uh, the list of uh, of announcements they're supposed to make. What did you feel when you heard that story? Uh, that that's really pretty something, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's it's definitely not in our st in, in in our standard rule book. Uh, but that's precisely where I'm so proud of our crews. They they just do what they feel is the right thing to do, and singing this song, you you cannot put it in any instruction. It was just done by one of the colleagues who felt like doing it, and uh, um, yeah, it touched me also when I saw it. It felt me it made me feel a little bit emotional too, and I think it shows our commitment to our to our customers, to our clients, and the deep connection between our our teams and the company and that's why I'm confident we'll make it through it's gonna to be tough but we'll make it through Peter we've known each other a long time I wish you well in what is an absolutely unprecedented time for the industry thank you sir for taking time joining us today